Hey, Egg Teacher Thoughts here coming at you with another video. This one we're going to talk about a little bit of plant nutrition. Now, I did get my cuttings in recently, and I have one tray that I'm a little bit worried about. Uh, it happens to be my Surfina Giant Blue Petunias. Uh, and I showed you just a little bit of a shot up here up close. So looking at these petunias, they are not the right color. And as I'm going through here, I'm kind of looking at what's going on to try to decide what is my tr nutritional or health defect that I have going on. And petunias are, petunias are absolutely notorious for having a condition called intervenal chlorosis. So what that means basically is in between the veins, the plant tissue turns yellow. So what I've got going on here isn't quite that, but uh, as far as I believe my solution for it's gonna take care of the problem no matter what it is. So intervenal chlorosis, I got a little drawing here. So intervenal chlorosis is when the, the veins of the leaf of the plant, they remain green. But in between the veins, it starts to turn yellow. And as we look through here, we're looking for signs of intervenal chlorosis, which we'd have a little bit of it here. But if you get up in here, it's actually kind of reversed. So like here we have yellow veins and green in between the veins. So that's presenting a little bit differently. Now, um, as we go through here, uh, you can see a little bit of intervenal chlorosis. Well, it's kind of the opposite on those two. You can see a little bit on these Calibrachoa here. Um, so the solution, though, for both of them is actually to fertilize them, to feed them. Um, it's not uncommon for petunias uh, and starts to come in a little bit hungry. Uh, denying a little bit of nutrients will kind of dwarf or keep a plant small, keep it from growing too quickly. Uh, in the plug trays as the grower is prepping those for you. So that's not un uncommon. Uh, this is pretty sad shape. Uh, and unfortunately, it's one of my favorite colors of petunia too. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed them uh, with a fertilizer regimen that is specifically designed for petunias to take care of intervenal chlorosis. But with it, the formula I'm using will also take care of other mineral deficiencies. Uh, such as potassium and magnesium, uh, which can also present in uh, either structural changes to the leaves or differences in color. Um, so I use a fertilizer, and I've talked to you about this before. It's called Jack's Classic. Uh, and this one is specifically formulated for petunias. Uh, and I'm going to show it to you, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. So this is Jack's Classic's um, petunia feed and let's spread this out so 2319 those of you that remember Monsters Inc 2319 uh, if you don't get that and you don't have kids you don't know the reference it's a number that they call out in the movie uh, in a Pixar movie uh, but I think if you go and you buy Jack's Classic uh, and it's not the professional version I believe this is like 20 uh, six, like 18 or something like that. The numbers are slightly different, but they're still there. Uh, the other thing that I want to point out is intervenal chlorosis is caused by a lack of iron. Petunias are very, very heavy feeders and their water and soil are very, very dependent on uh, having the right pH. So with this, this petunia feed has extra iron in here. If you see our our uh, word here, there's a lowercase e. Well, that's because if you, you knew your periodic table, Fe is iron. So petunia feed with iron. So iron is thrown in there. And then we have, let's see, let's get this in here. We have some other micronutrients in here. We've got a lot of nitrogen. We've got ammoniacal nitrogen. We've got nitrate nitrogen. We've got phosphorus in there. Uh, potassium, magnesium, sulfur, boron, copper, chleated copper, chleated iron, manganese, molybdenum, and chleated zinc. 
So these are all the micronutrients that those petunias are going to use. Now I said pH is kind of an issue there. Um, sorry, I'm tiny greenhouse. As we're going through here and we're watering them, if your pH gets too high, it's gonna make that iron that you have in your fertilizer or available in your water, it's gonna make that unavailable to the plant. So it's really gonna depend on the type of iron that you have in there. So if your pH starts to get above a pH of seven, and that's the pH of both the water and the soil, you know, when you put them together, uh, soil will buffer a pH. So if it's basic and you add a little bit of acid to it, it buffers it out. Um, here in my area, uh, when I was in Oregon, our water was acidic. Uh, we got a lot of rainwater that came in off the Pacific. It tended to be acidic. Um, and we would be, yeah, we'd be a little bit more on the acid side. Um, here where I'm at, we have uh, a lot of uh, mineral deposits from when this was an inland sea. So our water here as it percolates through the water table actually comes out basic. Uh, I don't as much have an issue with uh, the pH being off too much here. Uh, it's kind of buffered a lot um, and I, I find that it's okay. But if you get a pH above seven, that's where you're gonna to start to have a problem. And then the higher you get, uh, the less available the iron gets depending on, uh, depending on the type of iron. So with this, if this was intervenal chlorosis, okay, so that there, if it was intervenal chlorosis and we had yellow with green veins, we would say that that was an iron deficiency. Uh, what I think this is most likely uh, tied to, it's probably just simple nitrogen deficiency. So they're light yellow because they're brand new, they're stressed, they went through shipping where it was cold. Um, and it's not super warm in here. I try to keep it uh, about 56 degrees overnight and 60 degrees during the day. Uh, I think it's about 60 in here now. So my way to solve uh, this problem with the color, uh, and once these leaves are this color, they're not gonna change. They're gonna stay that color and they'll, they'll change in the new leaves, is I am feeding this at a rate of one tablespoon per gallon of water. I've got my gallon watering cans and I will uh, liberally apply that every time I water. Um, I am hopefully going to have my soil mix here on Monday so I can plant those up. Those will be some of the first ones to go there so that they have lots of room to grow. Uh, this is our sweet potato vine that we just got in. Uh, this was planted oh, the week of the 8th it was planted and it is already uh, put on a solid three inches of growth, actually probably four inches of growth. So this might be a little bit early for this sweet potato to get it in. I'm gonna have to remember that from uh, next year. Uh, this is Ipomium uh, uh, Tower Black, something like that. I've got a tag here somewhere. Ah, there it is. This was it. Ipomia Solar Tower Black. I did like this one because uh, when I saw it in the test trials, it was uh, really dense and a lot of foliage in there. I really liked this one. Uh, so they are really taken off. And these Callies here, these Calibracoa, um, they, they really don't like to be wet. So I want to get them out of here as soon as possible. But they have also put on some significant growth than they've got here. Uh, the licorice vine, that definitely needs to get in the ground. And let's go look at our other spot over here. We've got our verbena. It was in Durascape Red. Uh, so you have some other petunias here. Tags are on the other side, but I'm not going to spin it around. This is, uh, this is Solar Tower Lime, I believe. Uh, it's the sister variety to the other one that I just showed you. So a lot of those are really starting to grow. We're adding some more nitrogen there, and they're taking off but definitely we need to take care of that nutritional uh, deficiency on our uh, first batch of plugs over there. So I will have some more um, solutions as we go on. So 2319 Petunia fee, uh, Feed, F-E, that's your iron. 
and that is by Jax Classics. And that will definitely fix your nutritional issues with your petunias. So if you see them start to turn yellow, get them some Jax Classics, uh, fertilize them every day, and that's a, a tablespoon per gallon of water, and you're gonna pour that into that pot until it drains through completely. Don't let it sit in there. Uh, don't, don't apply the crystals directly to the soil. You wanna pre-mix it in water and then pour enough water in there that it saturates the soil and causes it to run through the pot, which is gonna flush out the salts. Uh, so that's what I would suggest if you have intervenal chlorosis, or in this case, what I believe is most likely just nitrogen deficiency, Jack's class, it's will fix it. And uh, before you know it, your plants will be back up and, and healthy again. Uh, hope you learned something. I'm just taking a quick break from grading. Uh, it's just after finals and uh, I decided to do short answer finals, which are much harder to grade, and I just needed a little video break. So hopefully you learned something. Uh, this is gonna go up on my own personal classroom so students learn to identify nutritional deficiencies. So almost uh, intervenal chlorosis, but not quite. It's kind of the opposite of it. Uh, probably someone will correct me exactly what it is, especially if my father watches this video. But yeah, I'm just guessing a, a nitrogen deficiency here, which we will clean up with a little bit of fertilizer. Hope you learned something. Ag teacher thoughts out.